Mitch, thanks, thanks for coming to the con. Um, for most, most people who are going to be here know your background, but you just, could you give us just a brief little update on, on, on what your background looks like and kind of some of your awards and why sure. you're here? Okay. All right. Very cool. Um, my name is actually Mitchell Davidson Bentley. I sound like a law firm. Um, and it's all like inherited names. But here's one of the interesting things. Um, I don't know, I think I covered some of this at opening ceremonies, but um, I'm actually named for my great grand aunt, Mariah Mitchell, the first woman astronomer. Mm. Uh, she's mentioned in the film Hidden Figures as the teacher of uh, those women who came from Vassar College. Uh, she was, uh, Mariah Mitchell was the first um, astronomy professor at Vassar College and um, taught, was their, their mentor, basically, uh, for what they did for NASA. Um, let me know if I drop off too much. I try to speak up, but sometimes I fail. This, actually, for a camera phone, is pretty okay. badass for what it is. Okay. So okay. you're, you're good right now. I don't have my fancy equipment with me. It's in the field right. room. Right, which is, yeah, okay. I wasn't anticipating on interviewing like this. So I was, let's, see how, let's see what my stamina is, how long I can. Okay, great, great. Um, my background is very, um, that, that is my heritage. You know, my grandfather was a big Star Trek fan when I was growing up. I watched Star Trek right out of the gate. Um, you know, all influences in my life. My mother was an oil painter, so I began learning my craft through her um, as mostly a um, young teenager. Uh, and that became, you know, uh, I, I was the art artistic type, the second born, fell into the role, you know, uh, bucked the system, ran away from home, did everything, you know, one expects the rebel to do. Um, and uh, thus, uh, my personality type sort of emerged. And um, my first career was actually in hotels and restaurants and things like that. Uh, you know, I did everything from cashier to uh, management to washing dishes and bellhop, uh, you name it. So um, that was eh, 10 years or so. Uh, went back to school, got a degree in electrical electronics technology, became a field service engineer primarily working on tape drive units from dictation units to eventually three quarter inch tape drive units. Uh, mostly with Sony equipment. Sony is actually a lot of, in the industrial grade at least, is a pleasure to work on. So uh, yeah, you get into consumer grade and it becomes a little bit of a different story. They have to pack it all in there a little tighter. So <laughs> um, that was my second career. Art is my third career. And I began that just prior to 1990, um, roughly in that area. That was my transition period. Uh, I went through a divorce, and as I recovered and refound myself, or rebuilt myself, or you know, reinvented myself, if you will, uh, I married to the other side with a passion for painting once again. Um, and the subject was astronomical art. I just didn't know that's what it was called yet. Um, so as I discovered science fiction conventions and so forth, my career was born. Uh, along the way, I've done everything from um, control systems for movie set uh, spaceships to um, book covers, magazine covers, trading cards, uh, yada yada, um, and um, paintings for, well, I did, uh, my master's thesis is actually on um, a historical overview of astronomical art and like 30 new works um, based on the idea that astronomical now art has now been raised to the privileged position of a genre of, in its own right. Um, that it has a history <coughs> that can be traced and uh, that it has evolved over that time and now artists pursue depicting it as a thing, you know, as uh, art for art's sake which is sort of the definition, you know, between that and holding up, uh, you know, over the course of time, which it is proving itself to do. So. How has the field, or has the field changed since 1990? Uh, good question. Um, 1990, okay. <laughs> well, um, it's, 
one of the major changes, the shifts that's happened is um, digital artwork, um, programs and um, methodologies for using computers to calculate realism and so forth in terms of incident of light against different materials. Uh, and the availability of some of these kinds of tools to be released into the uh, consumerist market, bringing it within the reach of average artists. So now that they can you know, get their own programs, use their own printers if they want, I mean, you know, it's, it's an investment for sure, but it's nothing like it used to be. It's not, you don't have to go industrial grade with everything anymore to get like a 200 year lifespan out of your work. So, um, you know, you just have to pay attention to matching things like inks with a uh, printer, inks with the material you're printing on, and, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, the color spaces, uh, there's a lot of technical info. Uh, I use far more targeted um, uh, crafts in the creation of my artwork now than I ever did before as simply a painter. That's pretty well. We're talking about digital items. We're talking about the astronomical work. Does, does art history still have a role to play? Oh, absolutely. Uh, on, on so many levels. Uh, first of all, <laughs> well, it's pivotal. It was the, basically pivotal in the invention of counting time from a historic viewpoint in terms of a solid sequence of non-changing events, rather than thinking in mythological terms about everything being a specific lesson that must be interpreted. And, and you know. so. Uh, it, as a part of, and, and it did that <clears throat> in an effort to keep track of the provenance of, of artworks, of valuable artworks, war, artworks that survived wars and uh, piracy and you name it, so throughout history. And that alone shifted so many things along the way. Um, and then the whole discussion, art from a historic viewpoint is basically a, a question and response conversation over a very long period of time and multiple movements to question and answer different aspects of, of what is art? What does it serve? What does it do for us? How do we interpret it? How do we embrace it? Does context matter? Whose context matters most? <laughs> the viewer, the artist, mm -hmm. the melu in which it evolves, the uh, you know, there's so much to consider from a historical viewpoint. And that gives us perspective. That gives us perspective on ourselves, on our evolution, and on our inner dialogues that we may not be otherwise communicating quite so readily. Which, however, yeah, I'm glad to see is changing. You know, and people are becoming more open, you know, to other forms of media joining the conversation now, you know. It's no longer as guarded by those who teach the scribes and, and you know, keep the uh, records and uh, preach the, mer um, the moral content. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an exciting time to be alive. It really is. Uh, and for me, the future of this is going to be combining media. It's fashion. going to be combining what? Media in some fashion. Like what kinds of media? Well, I've been... You know, we all, we just, we're, we're coming out of this, <laughs> and then the pandemic happened, uh, period in our uh, short history here. And um, it's, we're just now kind of re-socializing. So conventions have opened up again. I've started looking at other artists' work again, not just online, not just randomly, you know, in a targeted space, able to t talk with them about what their thoughts are, where their heart is, what is driving their work now. And, and I'm seeing some interesting approaches and methodologies and messages that are all very exciting. Um, you know, I, it, it's very positive on so many levels. Yeah, there's a lot of pain and angst in the world. There's wars going on. There are always, yeah, I mean, you know, how many holy books have said, you know, there always will be, um, and so on. But that's how we solve our conundrums on the spectrum of whatever it is we're doing in life. 
you know, and to me it's kind of life is all about that. It's it's about resolving your your spectrum of, you know, is it good, is it bad, is it is it chaotic, is it orderly, is it, you know, whatever your tape measure is that you're gonna use. Um, however you read it in a historical context, a literary context, a philosophical context, because perspective is everything, you know, so uh, it, we're, we're just, we're still learning so much about ourselves right now, and it's all coming out all over the place, from online media to uh, uh, all kinds of visual media, you know, film, movies, you know, all of our, the monomyth is being played out again and again everywhere we look. Um, you know, and it's and it's being fine-tuned into every aspect of our lives. And there's like these common themes of of consent coming along that we keep hashing out and going. You know, when does it go wrong? When is it done right? What you know? How does it look? How should it look? Uh, you know, who who says who has the power to say what? Yeah. You know, I mean, these are all the questions that we're our whole society is quest doing right now. And, and to me, that's kind of the heart of where my work is going right now, too. There's a message of symbols and language and questioning of what that might look like in other realities or on other worlds or in, their, you know, language is culturally created. And what are their cultures? So what will we find? You know, that kind of thing fascinates me. And how does that tie into mythology and I, I'm fat, I like I'm on this kick for angels right now. I mean, I, it's my between <laughs> isolation in my mind and my esoteric studies and my desire to know more and to understand these kinds of questions. It's led me to concepts to, to use that as um, allegory for different thoughts in this process of exploration.